These records sent to me from Vastrasia are fascinating. Look, there is a radical drop in the Goldavian population around the supposed date of Gorobek's execution, due to a huge outbreak of Red Plague. It cannot be a coincidence. Do you understand what this means? That we moved here for you to do the same thing you could be doing in London. I do not accept such levels of candor. Besides, since we have been here, I have done nothing but advance my investigations. Every conspiracy is unraveled bit by bit, and this data gives sense to Waldemar's curse. The speed of your reasoning is way beyond my abilities. <sighs> what are you doing during my lectures? The warlock swore he would kill his three confidants with the very same weapons he was betrayed with. Krubajan forsook his leader, embraced the Christian faith, and by means of it spread fear in the hearts of people. Lucanesque made use of his art to propagate a terrible illness in these lands. Surely that red plague. The mob blamed the necromancer, and Arkov supported the revolt and used brute force to eliminate the dissenters. Do you not see? Everything fits perfectly. Right, but didn't we come here to find evidence of the existence of Waldemar? And what do you think this wonderful portrait we found here in such good condition is? I would not have found this in London. Though the style is not synchronous with the Warlock's life, this is most probably nothing but a curiosity. It may have no value at all to any serious investigation. Truth is, is... Oh, who am I trying to deceive? I am a fraud! be discouraged. With your foremost intellect, it won't take you long to make the great discovery for which humanity has been awaiting on edge. I know you try to cheer me up with your poor compliments so I'll raise your salary, but all this unrelated data proves nothing. I came here looking for wonders, and in all these months the only thing I could call as such is a move without incident. Damn. Where is the magic of these lands? These are just papers. should stop being so dramatic and make more effort. You may be right. I'm having a mental breakdown. Inspiration flees from me. And given the awful diet you make me endure, my brain does not have enough sustenance to face all of these difficult chimeras. Ooh, my head. That bloody migraine again. I need a bath. Maybe thus I can get my thoughts in order and rid myself of the stench of failure I emit. Oh, that's perfect timing. Get rid of whoever it is before I lose my sanity. Coming! Yes? What can I... So this is the famous castle. Hey! Hmm, I had expected something far worse. Actually, the decoration's very tasteful. Listen! I'm Lady Florence of Richmond, Countess of Beresford, and the Baroness of Groldavia and Alturia. I wish to see your master. Please, announce me immediately. But... What are you waiting for? Your master has lived here for months and has still not come to greet me. That is not proper for an English lord, mysterious as he might be. Oh, look at those windows, Lily! I heard voices. Who was that? Some lady who insists on seeing you. She introduced herself as the Baroness of Groldavia. To me, she is like Countess Bathory. Get rid of her. Tell her I am... Ah, I don't know. I'm not in the mood for showing courtesies to an old harpy. Well, she's certainly not old. Maybe you should have a look. Oh, for God's sake, how can I concentrate with a hysterical fossil howling down there? Make her stop. Right away, sir. I am sure Archimedes did not have to struggle with this misfortune. Anyone can be a genius that way. I 
I heard screams, milady. What happened? My little Lily, he fled from my arms and ran. Oh, he must be lost now. Who knows what might happen to him in such a big castle? Don't worry, the castle is not as dangerous as it may seem. I'll find him safe and sound, I promise. Thank you. You are an angel. Those leather sofas are difficult to clean. I could never know for sure. Our relationship with them is business only. Oh my god! He must have jumped into the grinder, lured by the chicken liver of the master's puree! Lily? Hey, pretty thing. Are you... okay? Does that mean yes? Lily? Hey. Does that mean yes? It's the master's favourite dish. In fact, he almost exclusively eats that. It must have a special appeal to vermin. At least he died with a full stomach and then he ended up being part of the same paste he was digesting. Have you found my Lily? Hmm, I'm on it. Find him, please. He was a present from my late husband. If something happened to him, I would never forgive myself. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. can cook meals much more worthy of her palate. I don't understand how that makes sense. I keep my clothes when I'm not wearing the threadbare percale of my uniform has little in common with the soft and delicate fabrics of the master's suits. I was cleaning my shoes when I was interrupted by an absurd assignment out of nowhere, but there's so little left to do. Someday soon I'll finish. The master's study. I'm not allowed... Did you get rid of that howling Gorgon yet? It's not as easy as it seems. Uh, do I have to do everything myself in this house? No, no. Just enjoy your bath. Finish this as soon as possible. I don't even want to imagine the consequences of annoying him with this right now. Treasure of great re It's half rusted. Even if it's of no use for cooking, maybe I can find another use for it. It's a good one. 
I had to sacrifice three Christmases in order for the master to buy it. Eh, I for one tend to act with purpose. I'll think about what to do with all these when I've solved my problem with the Baroness. Lily, I think that's more than circumstantial evidence. The master says he doesn't understand how I can eat rotten cheese. He doesn't know it's the penicillin that gives it such taste and flavour. Ah, oh, the king of cheeses. Showing her that would give her an anxiety attack. Two beasts with dragon heads, goat horns and lots. Despite how they look, these are probably the nicest things around here. Behind those doors is a barren plain that separates us from human warmth. I have nothing to do there right now. There's a tradition of welcoming visitors, with, though we've never had many visits, so the licorice inside has become a kind of dusty, heavy mortar. Oh, Lily! I was ready to cut it into pieces right when I was interrupted. Oh, I'm eagerly waiting to put you in the oven. Mmm. Fortunately, I can keep that kind of harebrained idea at bay. It's the master's favourite dish. In fact, he almost exclusively eats that. It must have a special appeal to vermin. It's half rusted, even if it's of no use for cooking. Maybe I can find another use for it. Lily, hmm. I think that's more than circumstantial evidence. I'll think about what to do with all these when I've solved my problem with the Baroness. It's a bit hard, but I'm keeping it. You could prepare a good soup with it. Primal element. Beautiful and vital condiment. At least he died with a full stomach. The star of a multitude of tasty stews. Trusty tools. Now is not the moment to start cooking. Two fine specimens. I would swear there were three yesterday. Hmm. There's a little predator hidden under the carriage. That would explain the disappearance of the chicken from the kitchen. Come here, pretty thing. Ow! That beast almost tore my finger off. He seems hungry. Chew, little guy, or you're gonna choke. It'd be better to catch him first. Fortunately, I can keep that kind of harebrained idea Tamed, submissive, the lamb fought the beast and won. Damn, I'm starting to speak like the master. Come with Uncle Nigel. Now that he's not hungry and sees I'm not going to hurt him, he's quite docile. In the end, I'll grow fond of him. 
It's what happened with the master. He stinks like a wild animal that has never taken a bath in his life. He is a ball of lice entangled in thick hair. He is brown, not white. Yes, I'm afraid the Baroness would notice the difference. I brush his tail from time to time, though I don't think he really cares. It was my bed when we moved into this filthy place. Though my bunk in the cupboard under the stairs is made from hay, so I guess it still is. Idle wasn't a bad roommate, but his flatulence grows worse the older he gets. It needs a good tune-up, but as the master hasn't left the castle since we arrived, I've just been postponing it. Master says there's an Asian belief about water having memory, so soaking in it until you're as wrinkled as a raisin helps absorb knowledge. I prefer higher grade liquids to draw inspiration from, and I'd rather dry clean. The master tries to recover from his episodes of frustration by having relaxing baths. He's been spending quite a lot of time in the bathtub lately. The master forces me to keep it alight day and night. Yes, firewood grows on trees, but it's poor Nigel who must go and fetch it every day. An abomination of nature. Hairy, unclean and buck-toothed. Though for some reason he looks vaguely familiar to me. The only salt I know of is in the kitchen. No more suffering shampoo. Avoid lice, chemical burns, eye lacerations and the more than probable permanent sight loss other shampoos cause. Usage. Apply dry, rub and immediately rinse. Attention! Do not exceed the recommended dose or application time. It can cause hair discoloration and hyperseborrhea. Vanilla perfume. With these, I cut the master's hair. Though, I confess I'm tempted to use them in another way. I used all the shampoo. I have to remember to buy some more. He needs a rinse, yes. I'm afraid the Baroness would notice the difference. The master usually asks me to put one on his face while he bathes to open and purify. This one's already wet. Who knows what he's rubbed with it? I have to submerge him in water in order to rinse him. The towel is wet but not enough to rinse the animal. I have to submerge him in water in order to rinse him. The towel is wet, but not enough to rinse the animal. It stoically bears hours of the master's never-ending self-deception.
It's empty, but I keep one for emergencies. A service bell system similar to the one we had in London. Though, like in London, the master just yells at me most of the time. It's lucky I have it here, and a shame there's not even an ounce of ventilation and I have to sleep in fear of suffocating. Two of those relics the master insists on buying. I don't know how much dust has accumulated and how much is an actual part of them, so I've decided not to clean them. That is better. Hmm. You need your nails trimmed, Nigel. But do not stop. Have you found my lily? Hmm. I'm on it. Find him, please. He was a... Uh-oh. He's perfect. He's almost ready. Only the final touch remains. He's almost identical to poor Lily, though a little detail is... A new life awaits you in the arms of a woman who will fulfill you with hugs, kisses and love. Damn vermin, I envy you. Oh, you little devil! There you are! Yes, <laughs> he's been naughty. You won't flee from Mummy's arms again, will you? Do you know if your master will keep me waiting much longer? My feet are killing me. And at your feet I bow. Lord Alastair Ainsworth, scholar, gentleman, researcher. At your service, my lady. Pleased to meet you, my lord. Since you arrived in the region, you have been the talk of the town. Is that so? Truth be told, that is no surprise. It is difficult to maintain anonymity when you're constantly celebrated. Everyone wonders what kind of a lunatic would come live in this place of his own accord. Now I can say a rather gallant one in my eyes. I admit that meeting you has made the wait worthwhile. Indeed, that is something I hear often. Although I must say that if Nigel had told me I was making a raven-haired angel wait, I would have hurried. But I... <laughs> you will make me blush. And so I shall punish myself. I am not worthy of your rosy cheeks. Oh! <laughs> but tell me, my lady. What help could a humble bookworm offer an esteemed woman such as yourself? Oh, do not underestimate yourself, Lord Alistair. Believe me, he doesn't, usually. You are dismissed, Nigel. As you say, my lord. While out walking Lily, I could not help but come in person to invite you to our Calends of May celebration. It's the most important festival of our humble region. We would be honoured by your presence. We will celebrate this Saturday, the night of the 30th of April. The most important festival in Grodavia is held during the night of Walpurgis, and this year it is a Saturday, the Witch's Sabbath. Hmm, coincidence? Pardon? Oh, no, nothing. I was just thinking aloud. Ah, of course. I forgot. You are an intellectual. What curious local occasion does the festival commemorate? I'm not sure. As you may have noticed, I am not from Groldavia. Indeed, I noticed the absence of facial hair. I've only been here for a few years and I'm not familiar with the traditions. I do not know local history, but there is an exhibit of regional cuisine, a tasting of local wines. Oh, and they burn a bearded straw doll dressed in red. That is to expel bad omens. What a curious superstition, isn't it? You have no idea. 
But if you are interested in these kind of details, I'll be holding a meeting with the creme de la creme of Graldavian society on the occasion. Maybe you can get there the information I alone cannot provide. Do you usually visit your neighbours to invite them to the local celebrations? Only the ones who buy a huge castle uninhabited for decades and do not come to pay a courtesy visit to their baroness. You are no common neighbour, Lord Alistair. Oh, my lady, please. Who would dare to displease you? I am sure you would be in your element with the dignitaries of our little town. Come to the meeting this evening, and we will confirm that. Do you know anything about supernatural phenomena in the area? What an odd question. Life in Groldavia is very quiet, Lord Alistair. Quiet as a sepulchre, I would say. If not for the little soirees I hold, I would spend all my days knitting or walking little Lily. You should come to the one this evening and get to know the local dignitaries. You will fit in immediately. You are most kind to show such courtesy, but I am in the middle of something extremely important. That sounds interesting. What is it about? Well, historical research of great value. My colleagues in London are expecting results, and... That's exciting. A few moments of relaxation in the humble company of the most distinguished people in town may serve you well. Join our gathering this evening. There you'll be able to share your fabulous ideas. Yes, yes, of course. I give you my word as a gentleman that I will try to attend. Now, I am sure you must return to your duties, and I do not want to steal any more of your time. Truth is, I am enjoying the conversation. Oh, indeed. And there will be time to continue talking, at some other point. I hope so. Whatever your decision, I will be waiting. Madame? Well, Alistair, it is clear you are as charming as ever. But now you must employ your talent for the highest of purposes. Where were we? Ah, yes. Hmm. Hmm. Curiously, I am totally blank. This is going to require a good Havana cigar. Contemplating the goddess by the warmth of the fireplace always inspires me. What do we have here? Oh, an exquisite Havana cigar of such fine quality, even the band is excellent. There are other cigars, but those are cheaper. And a finely engraved cigar cutter. It is pretty sharp. Goddess of wisdom, beacon of poets, giver of light, and mother of science, I commend myself to you. Good heavens, what a fine cigar! It would be a pity to enjoy it with no appropriate accompaniment. I'll ask Nigel to bring me a glass of brandy. Why do you punish me so? I only beseech you for a spark of inspiration. What have I done to you? Ah, archaic idols! If you were of any importance, they would still make sacrifices in your name. Not that long ago, beings of flesh and blood showed the world that there is no need for churches to work miracles. Humans, able to know the answer to life. The universe. And everything. People like you. Oh yes, the time of the gods is over. Now we live in the season of the warlock. How many secrets your story conceals, I would give anything to discover them. I would give my soul for you to share them with me. That can be arranged. What? Who is there? You were saying something about giving your soul. You are... Oh my god! Well, I am not that popular anymore. You can call me Volgamar. I welcome you, O oh great warlock. I have spent years studying your life and work. 
I have come here to live where you lived, to breathe the air you breathed, to tread on the soil you trod. There are so many things we have to talk about. For the moment, let's talk about what we can do for each other. Where are you talking from? Are you back from the dead? Truth is, I never left. Even though it's been refurnished, this is still my home. Part of my ubiquitous presence has been observing you since you arrived. Scrutinizing. Now that you've finally come to the realization that it is futile to continue with what you call your greatest work by conventional means, I think you are someone with whom it's possible to come to an agreement. Are you going to demand that I be true to my word and deliver my soul? Your soul? What did I want with them, filth? Well, it is the usual bargaining chip in these cases, you know. Oh, no, no. Keep your soul with you. You will lose it anyhow in the darkest of ways. It always happens. I only wish to make a deal. Fine, then. Let's get down to business. What do you want from me? I want you to be the keeper of my secrets. Of my ancestral magic. Do you want respect, applause, recognition? I will provide you with such tools that you will be revered, adored, and... Fine, fine. You have convinced me. Where do I sign? For a moment, my friend. All this comes with a price. Ah, so it comes to this. Let me fetch my checkbook. Shall I write W. Gorobek, or would you rather it be to the bearer? I will return right away. Do not move. I do not want anything material. I am a free soul, you understand? I want you to fulfill the vow of vengeance I swore against those who betrayed me. The ones responsible for my incorporeal prison. There are certain details I cannot fathom. Matters that evade my knowledge. Do ask. But I warn you. Do not abuse my patience. Were you unable to flee by using the vast knowledge you are offering me? I was stripped of the sources of my power. Thanks to them, I became the greatest spy to walk upon this world. The very world that could have been mine. But without them, I was left mostly unprotected. If you agree to impact me, I will tell you how to use them. You will be strong enough to command armies with a single gesture. Access a universe of knowledge hidden from the immortals since the Elder Times. And as ridiculous as your words may be, they will captivate even the most skeptical, who will follow you without hesitation. Tell me, Alistair. Would you like to be a titan, or would you rather be a risible aristocrat? Truth is, it is very tempting. I am considering it. In all these centuries, have you not found a single candidate to carry out your plan? To be honest, that does not instill a lot of confidence. Oh yes, there was somebody. A painter. What was his name? It was many decades ago. Well, it does not matter now. At first, we had some serious communication problems. It is quite difficult to talk when you are a building. In the end, we became friends, as he painted this portrait of me. Thanks to which I recovered my voice. Sadly, he was not very accustomed to his work talking to him. So he ended up being a bit disobedient. Not long after, he vanished without a trace. It's a pity. It could have been a very fruitful relationship for both of us. I hope you are less imprudent. Will you help me? Well... I have to consider... I don't think I am wrong when it comes to the identity of those traitors. True indeed. You already know their name. Eugen of Klubasha, Nietzsche Lukalesk, and Vladimir Arthur. Three ruffians I thought were loyal, until they got the chance to betray me and steal my power. That interest of yours, does it mean you will help me? Hmm. I have to think about it.
Were you unable to fulfill your vow of vengeance during the many years you have been trapped in your immaterial prison? Well, things happened, mostly related to the real estate market. Look, when your body is turned to ash, your spirit cannot appear through the usual means. It is written in the Ghostly Appearances Regulations book that souls who die this way can only possess a portrait or image of themselves. And in the event that none exist, their last known residence instead. I never commissioned the portrait when I was alive. Yet evil art was not very appealing. This farm was done much later, so my essence was confined to this very castle, the doors of which no one would enter for many centuries. Then the purchase of haunted mansions rose. Is not any moment a good one to wreak bloody vengeance? What you say, Alistair? Will you be my executor? I am a bit indecisive. Centuries have passed since then. I think time has already done that for you. Oh yes, do not remind me of that. That is why I am still here. I cannot rest in peace until their seed has completely vanished from this world in the name of vengeance, as I swore. To be honest, back then I thought it would be easier. But I made some miscalculations. One cannot see clearly when fire licks your body as it burns your organs. What you ask me demands an important choice. I must... reflect. Enough faltering! You must decide. Are you with me? Or against me?